say I didn't do anything. I love them. And I'm devastated that they're gone. And I hope with every fibre of my being that Don pulls through. It all began with a mushroom lunch that turned into a nightmare, leaving three lives lost and one hanging precariously in the balance. Meet Erin Patterson, the central figure in a case that sent shockwaves through the whole of Australia. The alleged orchestrator of this cryptic event now stands accused of murder, casting a shadow over her character. Join us as we unravel the twisted chain of events leading to the tragic deaths of three individuals, all stemming from a seemingly harmless family gathering at Erin Patterson's residence. In the midst of this bewildering saga, our hearts and thoughts go out to the grieving family. This mysterious case has left us all haunted by the chilling events that transpired. Our story unfolds on a fateful day, July 29th, a day forever etched in the minds of those close to the characters in this story. The location is Leongatha, a peaceful little town nestled approximately 135 kilometres or 85 miles southeast of Melbourne in the Australian state of Victoria. On this day, Erin Patterson had prepared a special meal for dinner. The main attraction at this feast was a lavish beef wellington, generously adorned with mushrooms. Little did they know the dark turn this meal would take. What was meant to be a simple family meal, an opportunity for reconciliation turned into a real-life murder mystery. The evening was a chance for an estranged couple to come together for the sake of their children. Little did anyone know that it would unfold like a sinister plot ripped from the pages of a crime novel or a game of Clue. Four of the five diners at the table fell seriously ill, with three meeting their untimely demise. Miraculously, one survivor, after days of a desperate battle, emerged from the brink of death. What makes this case even more perplexing is that the very person who prepared the meal for the others emerged unscathed. The ill-fated guests of this feast included Erin's in-laws, Gail and Don Patterson, both 70 years of age. Joining them was Gail's sister, Heather Wilkinson, aged 66, and her husband, Ian, who was 68 years old. As they say at the table, none of them could have predicted the events of that night if they tried. The aftermath was nothing short of heart-wrenching. Violently struck by what appeared to be mushroom poisoning, the four guests were hurried to the hospital, desperately fighting for their lives. Unfortunately, the deadly poison had already taken a heavy toll. Gail and Heather passed away on the 4th of August, with Don following them the very next day. These were not just ordinary individuals, they were educators and respected members of their community. Meanwhile, Ian, a local pastor at a Baptist church in Corumbura, endured a nightmarish battle with the effects of the poisonous mushrooms. Miraculously, he emerged from the brink of death, finally being released in September 2023. In a twist of fate, Erin's estranged husband, Simon Patterson, had an unforeseen change of plans, narrowly avoiding the poisoned meal. Their two children had ventured out to catch a movie, sparing them from the sinister dish that claimed the lives of others. The enigma surrounding these chilling events has left the Victoria Police with no choice but to launch a comprehensive homicide investigation. During a press conference that followed an exhaustive series of inquiries, homicide officers dropped a bombshell. Erin Patterson is now the prime suspect in this haunting case. The mystery deepens and the search for answers intensifies. Erin, a self-professed wild mushroom enthusiast, confessed during intense questioning that she had employed dried fungi procured months earlier from an Asian store in her culinary concoction. To add to the mystery, she had also used a fresh variety obtained recently from a local supermarket. However, when the investigators pushed further, Erin admitted to concealing a critical detail. She had initially lied about disposing of a food dehydrator, a key piece of equipment used in preparing the fatal meal, as revealed by the ABC. During a candid interview with a public broadcaster, Erin recounted the eerie moment when her ex-husband confronted her at the hospital, casting suspicion upon her. He asked, Is that what you used to poison them? In response, the 48-year-old mother of two vehemently denied any wrongdoing, passionately asserting her innocence. In another interview, she bemoaned the portrayal of her as a malevolent witch, expressing deep sorrow over the loss of her in-laws. I'm devastated. I love them. 
Patterson conveyed during a video interview shortly after the story broke. I lost my parents-in-law, my children lost their grandparents, and I have been painted as an evil witch. The media's relentless scrutiny has made life in this town unbearable. I just can't believe it. This baffling mystery has sent shockwaves through the small town where it unfolded, capturing international attention. As the days pass, more unsettling details continue to emerge. Simon Patterson, Erin's estranged husband, revealed a startling revelation. He recounted a past ordeal, describing how he once found himself in a 16-day induced coma following a mysterious gastro illness that followed a meal prepared by Erin. The social media post from Simon paints a harrowing picture. I collapsed at home, then was in an induced coma for 16 days, during which I underwent three emergency surgeries, primarily on my small intestine, along with a planned operation he wrote in a May 2022 post. My family was asked to come and say goodbye to me twice, as I was not expected to live. As the chilling narrative unfolds, Erin's account takes a mysterious twist. She revealed to investigators that she had acquired the fateful mushrooms from an Asian grocery store, albeit with a fuzzy memory of the exact location. In a detailed description to ABC, Erin explained how she had stored the dried mushrooms in her Melbourne residence before transporting them to her Leon Gaither home. I decided to use the dried mushrooms that had been resting in my cupboard for some time. I rehydrated them and incorporated them into the dish, alongside the mushrooms I had recently purchased from the supermarket, she recounted. The question lingered. How did Erin manage to escape the sinister fate that befell her guests? She explained that she served her companions, allowing them to choose their plates first, while she reserved her portion for the very end. Enter the Death Cap Mushroom, a sinister character in this unfolding tale. A police-led autopsy uncovered a grim revelation. The symptoms experienced by all four victims were ominously consistent with the ingestion of death cap mushrooms, renowned as one of the deadliest fungi on the planet. These toxic mushrooms, scientifically known as Amanita phalloids, are responsible for a staggering 90% of mushroom-related fatalities worldwide. The danger lies in their resemblance to edible varieties like the field mushroom or the straw mushroom. The most lethal weapon in the Death Cap's arsenal is an amatoxin called A-amanitin, which cripples the vital enzyme RNA polymerase II, rendering cells incapable of their essential functions, such as protein synthesis. When a Death Cap is consumed, victims often remain asymptomatic for several hours, only to be struck by a cascade of symptoms including nausea, diarrhea, and other gastrointestinal distress, typically emerging about 6 to 12 hours post-ingestion, with the onset potentially accelerated by higher doses. Let us see the narrative unfold more. Erin claimed that she, too, fell victim to the beef wellington meal she had prepared and was rushed to Monash Medical Center in Melbourne. Going to the kids again? Upon their return that evening, Erin asserted that her children did partake in the same meal, albeit with a twist. She conscientiously removed the mushrooms, knowing their aversion to them. After learning of her in-law's dire condition, she decided to preserve the meal and hand it over to a toxicologist. However, a perplexing note emerged. Erin initially refused to cooperate with the police, citing advice she had received. She had been advised to decline to speak with law enforcement. She would later express regret for her initial silence, saying, I now regret not answering some questions following this advice, given the nightmare this process has become. Erin opened up about her harrowing experiences during the police interviews, describing them as terrifying and anxiety-provoking. In the ongoing saga that has gripped the nation, a multitude of layers continue to unravel, shedding light on the mysterious events surrounding the ill-fated lunch at Erin Patterson's Leon Gartha home. The involvement of a former Victoria detective, Charlie Bazina, provides us with valuable insights into the case's intricate nuances, pointing to the potential emergence of new developments that might finally unlock the enigma. As Bazina contemplates the road ahead, he suggests that fresh details may be forthcoming. With police poised to make strategic moves, there's a palpable sense of anticipation that the puzzle may soon yield some much-needed answers. Amidst the sea of questions that surround this case, Bazina firmly believes that Pastor Ian Wilkinson, the lone survivor of the lunch from hell, holds the key to unraveling the mysteries that have baffled investigators. The pastor's perspective could be invaluable. Bazina speculates that Pastor Wilkinson may shed light on the frequency of gatherings at Erin Patterson's residence. Were these regular Sunday soirees, fortnightly feasts, or sporadic get-togethers, 
The patterns of these interactions could prove to be a crucial piece of the puzzle. However, Bazina emphasizes that the role of investigators isn't to pass judgment or make assumptions, but rather to present the facts, whether they support a case for guilt or innocence. With this investigative framework in mind, Bazina goes on to highlight what investigators will likely focus on as they untangle the web of this baffling case. The central questions they will pose revolve around the why and how of the lunch. What prompted the gathering in the first place? What were the established customs and behaviors between Erin Patterson and each of her guests? By delving into the dynamics of their interactions, the investigators hope to build a clearer picture of the events leading up to that ominous meal. In addition to these crucial aspects, Bezina underscores the significance of Wilkinson's insights into the meal itself. How was it served? Where was it prepared? Were there any discussions or peculiar occurrences related to the mushrooms? These details hold the potential to recreate the atmosphere of the lunch, enabling investigators to piece together the events that transpired. But the intrigue deepens. Wilkinson's testimony might extend even further, potentially shedding light on whether someone else was involved in preparing the fatal meal and passed it on to Erin Patterson, who may have unknowingly served it. The motive behind this tragic event remains an enigma that begs to be unraveled. Wilkinson's perspective could prove instrumental in tracing the origin of the poisonous mushrooms and the sinister path they took to end up in the pie that claimed lives. The forensic puzzle in this case doesn't end with the mushrooms themselves. While the dehydrator, a crucial piece of kitchen equipment, may not yield any evidence of mushroom traces due to potential cleaning, other kitchen implements could provide a treasure trove of information. Fragments of the deadly fungi could linger on surfaces and utensils, offering investigators a trail of evidence to follow. Fazina emphasizes the importance of collecting samples from these surfaces and tools to conclusively prove the presence of the mushrooms, should the case eventually go to court. Erin Patterson's account of her own hospitalization after the lunch adds yet another layer of intrigue to this chilling tale. Police intend to scrutinize hospital records to corroborate her report and gather insights into the treatment administered along with any test results. Moreover, the claim that she had purchased the mushrooms from an Asian grocery store is set to undergo a thorough investigation. Bazina is quick to point out that the inability to recall the store's exact location doesn't automatically cast suspicion on her. The trauma and shock of the events that followed the lunch could have understandably clouded her memory. In the labyrinth of relationships in Erin's life, the inquiry promises to delve deep. Interviews with her ex-husband, Simon Patterson, and her children will be conducted, with past incidents and controversies coming under scrutiny. The investigators are determined to unearth any potential connections or motives that might be buried buried in the past. Amidst these complex layers of investigation, a surreal twist emerges. Victoria Police disclosed to NBC News that the police statement, which had provided some key details, appears to have originated from Erin's legal team rather than their official channels. As a result, they anticipate that it may take some time before they can share more information about the case. Nevertheless, the homicide investigators have initiated a thorough search of Patterson's residence. During this search, detectives have enlisted specially trained technology detector dogs capable of sniffing out USB memory keys and SIM cards, signaling the depth and complexity of their investigation. The one constant throughout this bewildering journey is the open-minded approach of the police. They remain receptive to the twists and turns that continue to emerge, constantly reassessing their understanding of the case and their leads. One particularly intriguing addition to the investigation is the mysterious illness that Simon Patterson, Erin's former partner, experienced in 2022. This has now become a significant component of the probe into the poisoning, with investigators scrutinizing every detail for potential connections. Ultimately, Erin Patterson faces a formidable legal challenge. She has been charged with three counts of murder and five of attempted murder. These charges encompass the events of July 29th, when Patterson hosted the ill-fated luncheon at her Leon Gaither home. Additionally, three of the attempted murder charges relate to separate incidents in Victoria that occurred between 2021 and 2022, where Simon Patterson, a 48-year-old man from Korumbura, fell critically ill after other meals. As the narrative unfolds, the complexity and depth of this true crime story continue to captivate the public's attention. 
months of investigation, official police statements, media speculation, and insights from forensic experts have all contributed to the evolving narrative. The nation remains riveted by the unanswered questions, as it becomes increasingly apparent that the truth lies hidden within the intricate layers of this enigmatic case. With the unwavering commitment of the investigators, the truth may yet emerge from the shadows, offering a sense of closure to the haunting mysteries surrounding this true crime saga. Amid this unfolding true crime saga, the investigation takes a revealing turn, casting a spotlight on Erin Patterson's troubled history with the law. A startling revelation emerges. In 2004, under her previous name, Erin Trudy Scutter, she faced the consequences of her actions. The Australian reports a grim episode from her past, a conviction on five charges, which included a drunken high-speed rampage behind the wheel of an unregistered car. This reckless incident led to a 30-month suspension of her driver's license due to her state of extreme intoxication under the influence of alcohol. However, when asked about her past mistakes in an interview, Erin seems unbothered. Her lawyer steps in and says she's not interested in talking about her troubled history. In a short response, Erin simply says, My lawyers told me not to talk to you. Erin's character remains complex and leaves us with more questions than answers. As the community deals with the shock and sadness that has affected their close-knit neighborhood, residents like Nathan Hershey express their surprise and sorrow at the unfolding tragedy. Hershey reflects the feelings of those around him, people who are trying to understand such a deep loss. The victims were dearly loved and respected in the local community, making their sudden deaths even more heartbreaking. Mushroom hunting is a popular activity in the area, even though it can be risky. Hershey mentions that many people in the community know how to identify the mushroom they're looking for, but he also stresses the need to be careful when doing this traditional activity. After the tragic events, the Mushroom Growers Association, though representing only a small part of the population, strongly defends the safety of their mushroom supply. They say there's no way poisonous mushrooms can be found on commercial farms. The dangerous mushrooms usually grow in the wild, while the safe ones are grown indoors with strict rules to make sure they're safe to eat. This information provides some comfort in light of the grim news. Amid all the chaos, the Patterson and Wilkinson families released a statement through a newspaper thanking the wider community for their support, love, and prayers. Nathan Hershey, who knows the Wilkinsons personally, describes them as kind and caring people with strong values. The community comes together during this tragedy, offering comfort and a sense of togetherness in the face of such a terrible loss. While the investigation is still ongoing, Erin Patterson is considered a suspect, and her guilt hasn't been proven yet. She decided not to ask for bail, and the next court hearing is set for May 2024. Throughout this difficult time, Erin maintains her innocence and denies any wrongdoing. The prosecution asks for 20 weeks to prepare evidence for Patterson's lawyers. They need time to analyze the computer equipment taken from her home, showing the seriousness of the investigation as they leave no stone unturned in their search for the truth. In conclusion, this puzzling case raises many confusing questions. Was Erin Patterson just an unlucky victim caught up in a family poisoning, or is there a more sinister plan in motion? Did she use mushrooms as a harmful weapon on purpose, knowing they could be dangerous, and is her apparent remorse a way to make people feel sorry for her as her bad actions are revealed? The previous incident with Simon Patterson being poisoned adds even more complexity. Was it a coincidence, or was someone trying to harm him on purpose? This sad and mysterious case gives us a lot to think about. As we examine the evidence and consider the complicated relationships, one thing is clear. The truth is hidden in the many layers of this mysterious, true crime story. As the investigation continues, the whole nation waits anxiously for answers and some closure in the face of this tragedy. What do you make of this case? What logical end can you deduce from this mushroom poisoning scandal? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Subscribe if you haven't already to get more true crime stories from our channel. See you in our next video.